The name Bharat Varsh for the subcontinent as a whole was commonly used in the political discourse of Bengal certainly since the Hindu Mela of 1867. One of the earliest literary evocations of the concept of Bharat Mata was Dijendralal Roy's song Je dino shunilo jalodhi hoite uthile jononi Bharat Varsho uthilo bishshe sheki kolorob sheki ma bhakti sheki ma harsho An early visual evocation came in 1905 with Abhinandanath Tagore's painting Bharat Mata visualized as a serene saffron clad ascetic woman the mother carried the bones of food clothing learning and spiritual salvation in her four hands a conscious creation of an artistic icon of the nation Abhinandanath tells us in a memoir that he had conceived his image as Bongo Mata and later almost as an act of generosity towards a larger cause of indian nationalism decided to title it bharat mata Our history wrote the Shadeshi leader Bipin Chandra Pal is a sacred biography of the mother our philosophies are the revelations of the mother's mind our arts our poetry and our painting our music and our drama our architecture and our sculpture all these are the outflow of the mother's diverse emotional moods and experiences our religion is the organized expression of the soul of the mother the outsider knows her as india the full truth and reality of this concept could only be grasped in pal's view in the light of the entire nature philosophy of the hindus especially the conception of the earth as prakriti the conception of mother associated with our geographical habitat is affiliated to this old old universal hindu conception of prakriti but of prakriti conceived especially as shakti in the cultural context of bengal the nationalist cult of the mother not surprisingly emphasized the female principle as shakti or the source of strength consequently a certain concordance came to be drawn between the mother goddess whether in the form of durga or kali and the mother country namo namah ya devi sarva bhuteshu vishnu maiti shabdita namastasyai 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 namo namah as arobind ghosh argued in 1907 It was only when the mother had revealed herself that the patriotism that worked miracles and saved a doomed nation was born. He credited Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay with having caught the first modern glimpse of this grand spectacle. It was 32 years ago that Bankim wrote his great song and few listened. But in a sudden moment of awakening from long delusions, the people of Bengal looked around for the truth and in a fated moment somebody sang bande mataram the mantra had been given bonkim's hymn to the mother originally written and printed in 1875 as a filler for a blank page in his journal bongo darshan had a checkered and controversial career in the service of the nationalist movement it was inserted into bonkim's novel anandamot in 1882 and set to music and sung publicly for the first time by rabindranath tagore at the calcutta session of the indian national congress in 1896 
वंदे मातरम सुजलांग सुफलांग मलैज शीतलाम शस्य श्यामलाम मातरम शुभ्र ज्योत्स्नापुलकित यामिनी फुल्लकुसुमित द्रुमुदल शोभिनी सुहासिनी सुमधुर भाषिनी सुखदांग बरदांग मातरम वंदे मातरम वाइल वंदे मातरम द सॉन्ग एंड द स्लोगन सून बिकेम द क्लैरियन कॉल फॉर रेवल्यूशनरीज आर्म्ड एंड नॉन वायलेंट इन बेंगाल एंड इन द कंट्री एज अ होल देर वॉज दिस प्रॉब्लमैटिक क्वेश्चन of whether the concept of nation as mother left any space whatsoever for the accommodation and expression of the religious diversity of the bengali and indian nations certainly on this issue the narrative started off on the wrong foot the final verse of bonkim song bande mataram could not resist a conflation of the mother country with the mother goddess twang hi durga दशप्रहरन धारिणी कमला कमलदल बिहारिणी वाणी वीणादायिनी नमा थम द इक्वेशन ऑफ नेशन विद गॉडेस अंडरस्टैंडेबली लेफ्ट मेनी कोल्ड वॉट कंपाउंडेड द प्रॉब्लम फर्दर वॉज द अपियरेंस ऑफ द सॉन्ग इन बंकिम्स नॉवल आनंद मॉट दैट वॉज एलेजली ड्रिपिंग विथ एंटी मुस्लिम प्रेजिडिस The Bande Mataram controversy exploded with full force at the All India political level in 1937. The question was whether the song should be performed as a national anthem at Congress gatherings. At the suggestion of Subhash Chandra Bose, it was decided to seek the advice of Tagore in an attempt to resolve this question at the meeting of the All India Congress Committee in Calcutta in October 1937. Tagore wrote privately to Bose that the song containing adoration of Durga was wholly inappropriate for a national organization that was a meeting place for different religious communities. In a measured press statement the poet explained that he had found the feelings of devotion and tenderness as well as evocation of the beauty of Bharat Mata in the first verse of the song appealing but he had no difficulty in detaching this verse from the whole song as well as the book in which it had appeared the congress accepted tagore's advice and resolved that henceforth only the first part of the song would be sung in national meetings and in 1950 the constitution of independent india adopted vande mataram as the national song Mahatma Gandhi said as a lad when i knew nothing of anandamat or even bonkim its immortal author vande mataram had gripped me and when i first heard it sung it had enthralled me i associated the purest national spirit to it it never occurred to me that it was a hindu song or meant only for hindus however he also added that i would not risk a single quarrel over singing vande mataram at a mixed gathering One of Bonkim's translators, Alushom, points out that to draw conclusions on the socio-political views of Bonkim based on the Vande Mataram narrative only may not be entirely appropriate. In his body of work on Hinduism, Bonkim has spoken again and again respectfully of other religions, including Islam. At the end of his novel Raj Singho, Bonkim candidly shared his views stating that human attributes of good and bad can never be ascribed to the communities that they belong to. Bonkim had not set out to write a national song. The song was contextual to the plot of Anandamot where a group of rebel sanyasis operating out of the forests of Bengal draw upon the devi's image to inspire their band of followers. One needs to point out that in his personal faith Bonkim was a follower of Krishna and in his extensive writings on the Hindu religion had on several occasions questioned the cult of devi worship in Bengal Bengali Muslims were familiar with 
and understood the concept of the nation as mother, even if they did not fully share the Bengali Hindu's mother complex. Perhaps the most powerful educations of the nation as mother were made by the Bengali Muslim revolutionary poet Qazi Nazrul Islam. In one of his most popular nationalist songs, he exhorts the leader, imagined as the captain of a ship in peril, to face up to the challenge of saving his nation, religious community, and to say unambiguously that those who were drowning were all mother's children. Much later, the Bengali Muslim nationalists who led the movement of independence for Bangladesh drew upon the entire corpus of early 20th century nationalist literature, Goddesses and All. And in 1971, a newly independent Bangladesh adopted Tagore's Ode to Mother Bengal, Amar Shunar Bangla, Amitomai Bhalubashi, as its national anthem. Shamla <laughs> 